Okay, so this was the point at which we finished the previous video. Um, I'm going to start by going back to the normalized coordinates because uh, it's a bit simpler to work that way. Um, and what I'm going to do in this video is that I'm going to use the camera input as a way of modifying the uh, also bring up the scale as a way of uh, modifying the z-axis. So the z-axis is uh, the depth, you can think of it that way, just the depth that it's being displaced from. Um, so in this case, we all we all always have a, a value of zero, so it's not being displaced at all. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take input from the webcam, and I'm going to, like, depending on the intensity of, of color, I'm going to, dis like, displace the... the, the the axis of each point. Um, so I'm going to start by um, grabbing from my input. So I'm going to use jit.grab and I'm going to say open. And just I'm just going to I'm going to show you my face over here with the P window just so that you see what's happening. There's a few processing things that we have to do before um, we actually send it into jit.gen. So I'm just going to start by opening it. And you can see my face over here. Um, it's probably going to be really out of sync with, with the audio, but whatever. Um, so there you go. That's my face. I'm going to erase this. And I want to turn this into a single plane video. And um, I'm going to use an object called jit.rgb2luma uh, for this. And uh, rgb2luma not only converts a, a video into a single plane video, but it actually like kind of like proportionately uh, adjusts the different colors so that perceptually it's kind of like well balanced, let's say. Um, so if I go to pwindle, uh, P you'll see that this is a black and white video. Um, this is not exactly the same as if you just had taken a single plane of, of the original video, uh, because if you open the help over here, it's going to tell you how it's scaling each single color. Um, okay, so now we have a single plane and What's happening here is that, like, if I go over here and I open a jit dot uh, cell block, is that this is giving us values between? Well, right now it's in in uh, car kind of data, char whatever, uh, and we need to convert it into flow thirty two. Um, but essentially, it's just telling you a value for each individual cell in our matrix. So this is useful because um, we want to use that as a displacement from our origin point in the uh, z axis for our plane over here. So what we saw in the previous video is that essentially the matrix that's coming out from here is going to be a position for whatever point you're thinking about. So um, in this case, like we start at a coordinate of minus 0 0.5 and then we have this one of minus 0 0.5. So essentially that's this point over here. However, we don't have any change in the z axis. But what we could do is that we could take these values and apply them to the z-axis so that the points move according to whatever it is we're feeding into the camera. So I'm going to make an input over here. It's going to be into. And I'm going to use the uh, concat operator. So it concatenates vector values into a larger vector. So I'm going to take, uh, well, I'm going to take only this x-axis from this one. I'm actually going to use the vec operator. It creates vectors from, from single scalars. Uh, so I'm going to take the x-axis from this one. And I'm going to take the y-axis from this one. And then I'm going to take the z-axis from whatever video I'm sending from here. And because it's a single plane, we can just send it like this. So right now, we're not sending any video, so it's still a value of 0. However, if I just simply... Um, let's, let me see if I need to, to convert it. Okay, we don't even need to convert it, that's convenient. Um, so if I just send this video that I'm sending from the webcam, that's going to be calculating the distance from the Z axis. So we can actually see what's on the webcam being displayed on my grid. So I'm going to add more points to my matrix. I'm going to make it square, just for the sake of argument. Um, and you can see how that's me over there. The only thing is that uh, it's inverted. So we can um, invert it in different ways. Um, I guess that the simplest one would just be to use probably jit.lota. Um, 
So let's let's look at that over here, jit.p window. So I'm gonna use um, I guess um, um, I haven't defined the like the dimensions. I I think that let, let me see what the, the size of the webcam input is because I can't remember. Um, 320 by 240. So we're gonna anchor it at the middle, which is gonna be anchor X. It's gonna be 160 because that's the half of 320, and then anchor Y. Uh, what was it? 120? Was it 120? Yeah, 120. Uh, okay, so I can erase this, and I'm gonna uh, put a bound mode one. Uh, so that it doesn't like leave any leftovers, and um, actually I think that there's an easier way of doing this with jit dot. What is it? Matrix map. Yeah, I think that maybe this is the easiest way. Is it map? Or what is? Or in terms? Well, I, I I think that there is an easier way of doing this. I I'll, I'll include it. In, in, in the comments later, but um, or in, in an attached patch, uh, but then we can use theta, and I think it has to be pi. So let's see. Not no, yes, almost. So it's it's pretty close. It's not exactly, but that's not exactly pi. So that's why it's not being that precise. So if I send that reverse video, we can see how. I have that input from from the camera, so it's pretty cool because uh, uh, you can use any image input as a way of displacing the camera, um, and it kind of looks like the the video for House of Cards by Radiohead. I think I think that they use something like this. I haven't seen it in a while, but I think it kind of looks like this. Um, the only thing about this technique is that it looks really weird because it's not actually calculating the depth properly. It's just using whatever color is brighter, it's going to be more um, kind of like bulged out. So if you look at my face from this angle, it looks kind of normal, I guess. But if I zoom in and I move it like slightly, like that's not what my face looks like from the side. Um, but that's fine because that's just, that's just what's, the, that's just the information that you're sending it. You're, you're sending information from color and not necessarily from actual depth. Um, but yeah, that's how you can use... Uh, look at my lips, they look so strange. Um, but that's how you can use a video input from your camera as a way of kind of extruding on a grid that you have uh, being drawn by jit.gen. And it's pretty cool. It looks like one of those things that they sell in stores uh, where it's like a bunch of needles and you put your hand on it and it kind of like traces the shape of your hand. But like, it does a lot of really cool things. You can see how it's actually um, like changing the shape. It's not a square anymore. It, like, it's not a perfect square. It's not limited by that. Um, and you don't have to necessarily use a, uh, like a webcam phasing. You, you can use like more interesting footage and you can even use uh, footage that is like aesthetically pleasing on that, unlike my face. Um, so, for example, I can take this away, for example, and I'm going to use something that is very aesthetically pleasing, like the chickens. The thing about the chickens is that it's really heavy video. Fuck the chickens. Um, I'm going to go... The basketball kit is less heavy. So we can see the actual kid playing basketball and we can see his garage door or whatever which I think is really cool and you can then do whatever it is that you want to do with these particular cells so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a new, uh, another video that does uh, different kind of manipulations on the cells without video first and then we're gonna mix those manipulations with video uh, so that you can see the kind of things that you can do with with working with cells like this um, with video and other types of manipulation 
So, see you in the next video.